Hi, how y'all doing today? Good, I hope. It's so nice and cool out there. It's getting cloudy though. It's supposed to rain. <clears throat> I've been studying uh, civilized, civilization and I went to the library and checked out just all the books that had the word civilized in it. And I got a very unusual book that tells a lot just by uh, what it's about of civilization and where as it talks about the universe <clears throat> The name of it is civilized life in the universe written by George Basila and The rest of its title is scientists on intelligent extraterrestrials Think about it I'll read the flap to you <clears throat> From Aristotle to Stephen Hawking, <clears throat> some of the most prominent Western scientists have had definite perceptions and misperceptions about the existence of civilized life on other planets. Johannes Kepler, who transformed astronomy with his work on the shape of planetary orbits, was quite sure that the engineers on the moon excavated circular pits to provide shelter for lunar inhabitants. Christian Huggins, the most prominent scientist between Galileo and Newton, criticized Kepler's speculations, but used probability theory to prove that planetariums on other worlds are much like humans and practice the science of astronomy. Carl Sagan indicted Huggins as a biological chauvinist, but failed to see that he was a cultural chauvinist when he assumed that alien life would have a technology similar to ours, though far more advanced. This book traces the influence of one speculation on the next, showing an unbroken but twisting chain of ideas as it passes from ancient to modern times and from science to culture and back again. Throughout, the author interweaves his own view that scientific belief in and search for extraterrestrial civilizations is an impulse that is part anthropomorphic and part secularized religious. Now, for me, this is enough proof that most scientists are thinking that there are aliens, and yes, I do believe there are. I am experiencing them. But the scientist is not going to tell anything that they've seen, heard, or saw, or thought about it because they have no, no proof, no material, tangible proof. They don't have any because... Their proof is just as elusive as they are. Because unless you get their permission, you can't see them. Now, that's, that's to teach y'all some respect, I do think. There was a couple of bits in here I wanted to read to you. Because I thought it was very impulsive. And I also wanted to add that any man... Unless he was seriously considering something, that's a, the only time he has conversations with other men about it. Because men usually talk for three or four days before they do some of the simple stuff. So, yes, these scientists did uh, and are having conversations about such things. Along with other people like anthropologists and, and archaeologists and anyone they're connected to. Which is a lot for scientists. <laughs> and on page 12, the religious impulse says, So the idea of advanced extraterrestrial life emerged from a background of philosophical, religious, and scientific thought, with science and the last ingredient added to the mix. Renaissance thinkers made extraterrestrial life a part of early modern science. This meant that the old philosophical and religious notions of superior heavenly creatures took on new meanings in science. Religious elements continue to adhere 
to the perception of extraterrestrial life even as we study it in the 21st century. Many modern scientists are not aware of the long and complex history and the deep religious and emotional significance of the idea of intelligent aliens. They are not dealing <clears throat> with scientific perceptions alone, but with old religious beliefs and philosophical concepts that underlie current scientific thinking. Consider the case of Dr. Frank D. Drake, 1930, and so on, a pioneer radio astronomer and modern searcher for extraterrestrial intelligence. In 1960, he was the first to aim a radio telescope at nearby stars with the expectation that advanced civilizations in their vicinity might beam radio messages into space and thus to Earth. In 1981, an interviewer asked Drake what initially awakened his interest in extraterrestrial life. Drake's response was unequivocally clear. A strong influence on me, and I think on a lot of SETI, search for extra, extraterrestrial intelligence, people, was the extensive exposure to fundamentalist religion. Drake, who attended the Baptist church as a child, reported that many of his colleagues in the SETI move movement were either exposed or bombarded with fundamentalist religion. Drake reacted to his fundamentalist upbringing by turning from religious explanations of natural phenomena to scientific ones. He converted to the scientific way of thinking at an early age. Nevertheless, there are hints that his early religious training has had a lasting influence on him in 1992, when NASA was set to launch its most ambitious project to search for extraterrestrial intelligence, Drake wrote a book on the scientific search for intelligence beyond the Earth. In this book, Drake announced that the immortality may be quite common among extraterrestrials. Because Drake's notion of immortality had a scientific basic, basis, he thought that extraterrestrial creatures might teach humans how to live forever. Drake was not alone in believing that advanced alien life had achieved immortality. In 1981, NASA physicist Robert Jostro claimed that the older planets in the universe contain life a billion years older and more advanced than man. Scientists on these ancient worlds long ago discovered the secrets of the brain united mind with machine and created a race of immortal beings. Furthermore, these immortals had begun exploratory voyages throughout the universe. The immortal extraterrestrials discussed by Drake and Jastro recall the centuries-old division between immorta immortal celestial and mortal terrestrial beings. And yes, my dears, the rich men are still dreaming of living forever and being immortal. And they're paying scientists to study these things, I'm sure. But uh, they're keeping mum on that as far as news is concerned. Because uh, they know the Bible says it ain't going to happen. No. It's guarded by God's angel. <clears throat> now... The other part, civilization became a popular term in the 18th century when it defined a polished and refined state of society. Civilization was contrasted with barbarism or savagery, which possessed much lower levels of social organization, moral behavior, artistic sensibility, and knowledge. Many 19th century anthropologists mistakenly believed that all human societies pass through a savage and barbaric stage before they reach the heights of civilized societies exemplified in Western Europe. By the 19th century, science and technology became important parts of the definition of civilized life, the existence of science and industry. In Europe and America was proof of the superiority of Western civilization Modern searchers for intelligent extraterrestrial life consciously chose 
advanced technological civilizations as their models for alien societies. And I suggest, if you're concerned about what's going on in our world today, and, and extraterrestrials, I suggest you read this book, because I have been thinking myself before I even begin the, all this study into civilization, after becoming aware of the extraterrestrials. I don't know if you call them that. I call them sky people. And um, I'm sure there's some troubles here that even they're worried about. Or why else would they want some of us who are honest to reveal them? Because basically, they are still finding living beings of all sorts on this earth that we they've never seen before they didn't know existed and I think there are sky people that have their cities up there in the sky and they can move them at the flip of a nickel they can be here and there and I really do think they are so what uh, <clears throat> I'm sure if I was them I wouldn't tell anybody because rich men always try to use everybody to make their own own wants and to be fulfilled if they wanted to force them to do something. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't trust them either. But yes, they're there, and I wouldn't go against them. But they're good sky people, so I will help them whenever possible. As long as it lines up with my beliefs, we got to go ahead. So I suggest you read this book. I mean, this is really interesting. And if you've never seen any of them before, ask them if you want to. You're more likely to see them if you ask them nicely and be civilized. Because we have so many people who are uncivilized on this earth today. And just beware, don't try to lie to them because they can read your mind. Well, wherever you're at, day or night, have a nice one. Later.